Wow. Wow. Wow, this is this is some really deep stuff. I don't know what just happened, but something happened inside of me. Something snapped, something shook. I wasn't expecting that either. Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry. It's okay, it's all right. It's beautiful. <laughs> Monster is like really small, but it had to become that to stop me. And then the hurt child became present when you mentioned it. And I didn't realize this until now. There were things that I didn't remember yeah. until now. It's funny, I haven't seen that before. It, it feels like I'm the monster. I'm kind of seeing images of things. Of a, of a world where they can exist. This clarity brings all kinds of answers. It's clear. She like hugged me and then went back to her place, I guess, in my heart. Oh, it wants to come out. <laughs> it wants the bippity boppity boop Cinderella me. Like, <laughs> she's like melted into like my chest. It's like ooey gooey. All week, been finishing things, cleaning up more, started eating vegetables again last week. <laughs> and it kind of just started happening. It's almost like I just finished going through a meditation session. I feel like, like, you know, when you. When you hit that first joint, like in the morning, and you... I actually feel a lot more um, awake. Sound like you're in a good mood? Um, I don't know. I mean, I've been making a little progress. Um, yeah. I'm happy to, you know, be in this appointment. It's practicing alone, like when I hit like exile stuff. Sometimes mm-hmm. I get like worried that, you know, I might like leave something <laughs> like yeah. an open wound or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. So it's nice to reconnect. I've also been really enjoying the podcast so much. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's gosh. tons of fun. It's just, it's so cool how <laughs> much progress people make. I know, it's incredible. It really is. Thanks for being a part of it. Yeah. And thanks for sharing yeah. what you're sharing on Discord. Um, I saw your last couple messages and I didn't respond, but I'm I'm reading and appreciating them. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to do hard things in my life and like, Mm -hmm. I just, these parts, like I can see them like very strongly blocking, you know, movement in the direction I'm aiming for. Yeah. So sometimes I just have to deal with them. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Learn more about them. Uh, Mm -hmm. And Yeah. So I have this like cluster that I've been working around with you and in between. Um, it's like the the sad part that we were talking about last time. Um, mm-hmm. It's like a sad baby. Mm-hmm. And then there's the like brutalizing tantruming thing protecting that mm-hmm. that's very young but doesn't really know what else to do and then the sleepy part comes in and rescues from that um mm-hmm. and when i'm like looking for a job and stuff i i didn't I was like, hmm, why am I getting so sleepy all the time? And mm-hmm. it it's really come, become clear that that self brutalizing mm-hmm. uh, part is tr- even though I couldn't see it on the surface, it's triggering the sleepiness because you know the the project of like 
getting a job or selling a new product, these really tough things that I'm doing, like just by their nature involve a lot of, um, you know, speculative and low yield and lots of rejection. (laughs) So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, uh, have just been bringing what's behind that sleepy part more to the forefront and like the, the sort of futile energy of that self-brutalizing part of the the, um, system. And then there's the next layer of the exile that is behind it or one of them. Yeah. And it's, you know, this is, these two are so young, the, um, Mm -hmm. the exile and the, the like tantruming one. Um, Mm -hmm. and it's, it's a little hard to distinguish, like the difference between like being sad, which is the exile, uh, and the exile is like sad and uh, immobilized, mm-hmm. and then the the protector, the self, the brutalizing one is also a crying baby, mm-hmm. but is very much like fight. Right. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And it's kind of interesting that like the the third the next part that comes in is the sleepy part. But it's almost like a circle because that baby who's like trapped in those metal bars on the feet. Mm-hmm. is sort of forced to be lying down mm-hmm. and getting sleepy. So it's almost like a circle that keeps <laughs> hmm. spiraling. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense to me. And the more you see it and the more you can help the parts maybe see it too. Yeah. You know, if they're able to see that those reactions that might help them. Yeah. And and to know that you're there seeing it with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's funny when you get to these like really young exiles, everything seems like this primordial goop and it's not like separate parts so much. They're mm-hmm. all so, so like fractally tied in with each other. Mm-hmm. But, um, But it's interesting what I like. I just articulated that in my thoughts and words for the first time about how it's like this. Ex, it's like a. Um, it's a self-reinforcing um, loop that mm-hmm. sort of escalates um, because when this stuff gets pinged, it gets so intense. Sometimes I mean it. Like on a day-to-day basis, you know, the mm-hmm. sort of sleepy part, it's all very quiet and mellow. But like if something pings the feeling of the exile, which is like nobody gets me, nobody sees me, nobody hears me, the loop gets really, really intense. Yeah. Yeah. Like if it gets pinged directly and not just like kind of in the background of like, oh, this is really hard work Mm -hmm. and I'm going to get rejected a lot. Like that's different from, you know, someone close to me, like my husband, you know, I have me having an experience where I feel like I'm not being seen or heard or Mm -hmm. responded to. Mm -hmm. All makes sense to me. Yeah. 
You can work with any of those parts or anything else that's coming up. Would you like to have a minute of meditation? Would that help you tune in? Yeah, and... why don't we do a minute? Okay. And then um and I'll I'll see like it would it seems like it would be good to sort of work with you on like exile stuff because I don't know. I just think it can be it's just yeah. an important one to have definitely. like skill around that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely. Cause I, I I mean there have been times I've worked on parts and like it didn't end in a like sort of compassionate place and mm. it would wreak havoc. <laughs> mm. mm -hmm. Um you know, I wouldn't be able to like necessarily move forward. So Okay. 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 I'll set a timer. All right. That was fast. <laughs> we can do it again if you'd like. Sure. Okay. I'll set a timer. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So, do you know where we'd like to start? Well, it would be cool to like kind of look at that that place where in this loop where like mm -hmm. it ends in a in a very collapsed like sleep rescue and then it also sort of starts in this place of like being um like powerless and not able to get what it's asking for heard. Yeah. And you're seeing connections between the, the last step, which is the sleep rescue, and then the powerlessness of not being heard. Yeah, it's just that like, if the cycle ends with like this sort of kind of dissociative thing, mm -hmm. it's reinforcing the like lack of sort of initiative of the sad part, the, the sad baby part like that the futility of it mm -hmm. that it's only going to end in nothing mm -hmm. and that sort of nothing feeling <laughs> mm -hmm. is like this very intense alienation and um is very activating of the cycle okay so would it make sense to try to contact the sleepy part and then uh yeah see if we can make it more aware of that or see if it has any input it wants to give around that yeah okay how do you notice the sleepy part 
when it comes up? What's it feel like in your body? It feels like my eyes are like crawling. Um, I can't hear you. I think the you said it feels like your eyes are. I cannot hear you. My God. Oh. Hi. I can hear yeah, you. Yeah. I just mm, mm, my my internet is behaving this this cycle. <laughs> yeah. Um I'm I'm going to have to go on the cellular network. Um, you know, I feel like I've heard every other word you said. So if we're only getting one little dropout every 15 minutes, that might be tolerable. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So. Um, it feels like my eyes are. Are crossing. Mm -hmm. And it's this very, very powerful, very powerful pull. And my experiences with this part, um, you know, are that it really just wants to make me happy. Mm -hmm. um, it really just wants to take me out of of something worse. Um, mm -hmm. What in like my day to day life when it comes in and like makes me like semi-narcoleptic in certain situations mm -hmm. <laughs> not like if i'm talking to people or anything like that or actively doing something but like if i'm you know trying to be very self-managed like very difficult stuff sometimes it feels like it's like making me narcoleptic a little bit mm -hmm. um it it's like there's it's like I have these mini nightmares. <laughs> like they're like nano nightmares for like a split second. It's like ah! <laughs> um and they're none they're not pleasant. They're very like filled with um angst and like everything getting jumbled up and crazy. Um yeah, so that's how it feels like on a day-to-day -day basis. What's yeah, like little nano nightmares. Okay. Like, but at the same time, when I have contacted the part, like when I've been unblended from it, it I can see that it's like trying to take me to like rainbows and sunshine, mm. but it's just somehow that that doesn't work anymore, like in my practical real life. So it now, it it's it, it's 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 actually being experienced as like a really um, kind of involuntary and unwanted experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you feel towards the part right now? I feel like it's very powerful. Yes. Um, I feel like I have you know, an understanding of how it, you know, its utility and its when it was formed. Um, I feel like I want to learn more about it. I feel curious about its relationship with me and uh, other parts. Okay. Okay. So you have some curiosity about it. Yeah. So anything else? Are there any other parts that are... I don't know, not so happy about it that we need to ask space from. Checking. I'm 
sensing a little bit of the like tantrum y thing that it kind of like is trying to. I don't know that maybe there's some polarization between, you know, the, the brutalizing part that the sleepy part is trying to rescue from mm -hmm. and the sleepy part. There's some polarization. Right. There. The sleepy part makes the tantrum stop, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder if the tantrum part is, is resentful about us giving any attention or curiosity to the sleepy part. If it feels like that's its, its enemy or. Uh, well, the, the tantrum just wants to make sure that someone's hearing what it needs. Okay. Does it have anything it needs in this moment to let us meet with the sleepy part? Because I totally agree with the big picture hearing its needs. Um. I think it's kind of made its point. Okay. And you're okay with going back for it and listening more to what it needs in the future? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been noticing it's speaking up a lot more. Mm -hmm. Like I was reading a job description a few minutes ago and I could hear it like, <laughs> ah, this is like just chiming in about, uh, it was more like, It, it, yeah, it was making its sort of fears of not being heard by that job poster <laughs> known to yes. me. Yes. And so that's, it's pointing again to this exile, the not being heard one. And it's saying, this is going to come up. This is. This part's going to get activated again. Yeah. No, that and, was that part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did you feel like you were able to respond to its needs in that moment? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, a little bit, I mean, more than before. I think before it was just kind of in the background weighing me down and mm -hmm. I wasn't conscious mm -hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. And so when I heard it, like get, when I felt it get pinged, like, ah, this is an amazing like job and you'd really love it, but ah, they're never going to hear you, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I at least was able to hear it and say, okay, we'll work on it. <laughs> we'll... We'll do our best and it's okay if they don't hear us every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how did it respond? Um, well... This was like 10 minutes before our call. 
Um, I don't know if I really gave it its full experience. Um, mm -hmm. But it's still around, I would say, you okay. know, mm -hmm. kind of watching. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we could just let it know that its needs are important. We're trying to understand its needs through understanding the parts that it's connected with. And that we can meet with it directly another time if it's willing to give space. Mm-hmm. Is it right with that? I think so. Okay. It can jump back in if it needs to. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Do we miss anything? Is there any more you want to say or connect with this part about? I think it's okay. I think it's like giving me space to connect with the sleepy part. Okay. It's kind of like tucked away in my heart. I can feel it there. But it's, it's okay. It's calm, I guess. Okay. I don't know about calm, but it's contained. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Still feeling curious about the sleepy part? Yeah. Okay. Can you show it that curiosity? Invited to speak with you. Yeah. You mentioned that you thought it wants to make you happy. Yeah. But that it feels like it's kind of reinforcing the futility felt by the Exile. Mm hmm Okay. You could ask it if it sees that or if it has any input or response about that. How's it going? 
Well, if these are really young parts, stuff is so abstract. You might let it know that if it's feeling kind of unclear or too abstract to understand, just let it know that, that you want to understand it. Mm -hmm. Maybe another way to ask about if it sees that how can it how it can kind of increase or reinforce the sense of futility mm -hmm. um hmm. sorry i lost my train of thought Hmm. Does it feel like it's effective? Does it feel like it is effective in the way it helps you? I'm asking. James, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you right now. Did you say something before that? I heard you say, I'm asking. And then James, can you hear me? Well, you're, you know, sorry. I'm trying to find out more about how it feels. Okay. Get anything? Yeah, I, I, it's almost like a panic. Like the sleep is like some, it's like panicked behind.
you mentioned it being a rescuer. Yeah, like it, it's almost like it's a way of making me faint or something. Mm -hmm. He showed appreciation for its intention and for its power. Yeah. It's showing me Just got a lot of like anxiety behind it. It's showing me what that feels like. Like in my head. It's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it's like in my temples and And are you able to see kind of where that anxiety comes from or what, what that might be connected to? You could ask the part if it has any memories. About where that came from. It's showing me like the feeling of like tears. Like the tears make it sleepy. Mm -hmm. So those tears, it's... go ahead. Yeah. I mean, yeah, go on. Do the tears come from the brutalizing tantruming part? Yeah, I think so, because now it's showing me like ears hurting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You could try asking what it would rather be doing if it didn't have to work so hard in this way.
it's like it wants to be like able to pull itself with its arms out. Like it doesn't He wants to be able to pull itself up. Yeah. It reminds me a I lot. I mean, it's of it's showing the me this sense. Part. Yeah, it's showing me the sensation of like pulling itself, but it can't pull up the crib. <laughs> yeah. Its arms aren't strong enough. Right. And it's got that feeling of kind of being made to lay down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And there's some panic and anxiety around that. Um, now there is. Yeah, when you asked what it would rather be doing, it mm -hmm. it was showing me this like kind of strong like muscles mm -hmm. feeling. Yeah. But now now like yeah, it it sort of feels like this. It's a little bit pent up that that strength. Okay, how old does it think that you are? like 30. Mm -hmm. That's not your real age? No. <laughs> okay. Update it with your real age. And maybe let it know that you know and have worked with the sad baby, the immobilized baby, and you have some understanding and have worked with the brutalizing, tantruming part. That you've seen how they all affect each other and the loop. And that you'd like to help it out by working with it, by working with it, by working with the other parts. Just see how it responds to that. making my tongue tingle for some reason. Okay. Like, and my hands. Yeah, it feels like almost like when a muscle is asleep and mm -hmm. it wakes up. I think it it's showing me like some sort of waking up. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't want to take its power away. Just want it to be able to use it in the way that it wants. We want to empower it. Yeah. kind of help it get out of the cycle.
Mm-hmm. Does it have any requests? What does it need from you going forward? What would it like for you to do for it or with these other parts? It's showing me like how it like floats in the sky. It's like ungrounded, I guess. Mm hmm. Would it like to feel more grounded? Is that something you can do for it or does it have requests around that? Yeah, it's like, it wants me to connect like the air in the sky to the air when I breathe in and out. Like it wants those to be connected. Hmm. Yeah, kind of more of that bringing it back into the body. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's showing me how to do that by like showing, connecting to the air when I breathe in and out. Hmm. It actually feels really kind of like a connection to my breathing that I've never really uh -huh. felt before. Awesome. Yeah, it feels so warm and like close uh-huh uh-huh another question i was gonna ask was about like is there a way that it would rather communicate with you and i wonder if that is part uh -huh. of it like you know rather than hitting you over the head with sleep. Yeah. Would that be a way to kind of meet with it? Yeah, it's got this like nice lightness to it. Yeah. I mean, like, it's, 
these little like nano dreams, nano nightmares that mm-hmm. I have. I mean, it might be like trying to bring some like imagination in, like like some sort of light imagination. I can sort of breathe into like tough things. Hmm. So it doesn't have to feel so bound and Mm -hmm. anarchy. Mm -hmm. It's funny, like when I listen to the podcast and I hear the imaginations of people's psyche, like like, it just where are they they getting that? Amazes (laughs) me. Amazes me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, and I'm like, wow, my parts are so literal. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. where is this sort of like I mean, like literally my my parts showing me like climbing out of a crib, you know, that's literally what absolutely it wanted. Um yeah. it's wanted and it probably has wanted it forever. It's yeah. wanted to send you that message. It's wanted someone to notice, someone to help. All the parts are looking for help, or yeah, they're, they're needing help and they're not. And it's they funny. They don't this... know about self's ability to do that. <laughs> um, it's funny because my my memories of being a kid were like absolutely no playing the only game i remember playing is like playing dead (laughs) Mm. like somehow this sort of sleepy part like i'm just it, it it was like somehow it kept it took up took on like all the imagination it put it into like a dream world Mm -hmm. not my conscious waking world and i don't know i it's just this this visual it's showing me of like bringing the sky back into my breath is opening up space that feels kind of imaginative for my system like a imaginative image. Um, yeah. Did the part just want to show you, when you said the thing about playing dead, is that something that the part was just reminding you about? The sleepy part? Um... Yeah, it. I mean, it, it was a conscious memory that I've had mm-hmm. for bef- since before IFS. Mm-hmm. I remember this very like, you know, it might have been like a very young child feeling sort of depressed and somehow thinking it could get attention from playing dead. Um, but it did just bring in that memory. I think this like this feedback loop somehow is very powerful. In the, uh, other experiences with my sleepy part have shown me that like I got love from my mother when I was asleep. <laughs> like that she would like give me kisses when I was sleeping, but not Mm. so I would fake being asleep (laughs) Mm. Mm -hmm. so that I'd get like loving attention from her. Mm -hmm. Do you have an age associated with either of those memories playing dad or mom giving you kisses when you're asleep? 
Um, the mom giving kisses when asleep is like something like six or eight months kind of age. The playing dead is more like four. Yeah. Okay. So this part has a lot more that it's that it's tried to secure for you than than just make the tantruming stop. That's it's a good useful. point. Yeah. It's been useful in different ways and different different times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that I haven't blended with it this whole time. Yeah, I was going to ask. You haven't, you're, you haven't it, felt sleepy in the, in the conversation? It, it, no. Awesome. It, it does happen all the time during parts work that it comes in, but I've been able to stay unblended. Yeah, that's really great. You're just, you're just meeting it head on, even though it was abstract. You know, you're able to to learn all this from it through what it shows you. Yeah. So it would rather be strong. Mm -hmm. It would rather it be be grounded and connected by by being breathed in. Yeah, it wants like the sky and lightness to be breathed in. Let's see, what else does it? Mm I think it, like, I think I have parts that fight it. They're probably, mm -hmm. like, older manager parts that, like, don't want sleepy part to come in. Right. So it wants to, like, more openness to, like, allow its airiness in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can kind of advocate for it. It's on your team. You see all the good it does and has done. So when those managers are pushing back, you might just let them know what well, Okay, I'll just I'll just take some breaths with this part. We don't want to exile it also. Uh stay unblended from it. Mm -hmm. Like it thinks it's stronger than me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you can let it know that that's, that's uh, it takes two, you know. It has you, it has that power of blending. That the manager did too. Well, I think any part, you know, we're self. We're, we're kind of asking the parts, please don't, please don't blend. Let me help. Let me, let me do this. And so when they say they don't want to blend, it's, it's just, I'm just reminding parts that, 
that's that's also their uh they have some autonomy or some power in that decision huh wow that would be an amazing thing to communicate to a part Mm -hmm. because i've always thought of it as like self has to be more powerful than the part but what you're yeah. saying is different. It's like there's a there's some self in the part that makes a decision to mm-hmm. unbend. I when I think about self's power, that is the power of love, warmth. And it's on a different axis from the power of parts. The power of parts uh, can put you to sleep, can wake you up, can give you many nightmares. Um, they have they have more of that, and they need to. They need to, especially when we're children. They need to be able to take over and keep us safe. And that power of love is kind of a distant, it's not necessary in these, in a lot of situations where parts are driving. They don't see it as necessary. They don't see how that's going to help. And again, as, as children, often that's, that's exactly what we need, is those parts to come in and put us to sleep. Yeah. Whatever they do. So we have to kind of negotiate with them and show them that 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 self has this greater power, this love power, but it's but it's a different attack. It's a different approach. It works in a different way that they might not even really be able to see, other than when you show it to them. That's what we're doing. Well, I am with my sleepy part, not blended with it. So I hope other parts of my system will feel comfortable that it's possible Mm -hmm. to, to bring it like bring it in. Mm -hmm. You can do that with each of the parts in the system, each of the parts in this loop. And they all might take this kind of time and attention, but... They can all kind of relax their grip. Over time, 
and you'll be able to spend more time with the the exile parts, especially that may need even more time. Mm -hmm. Does this feel like a good place to stop? Yeah. Any questions, concerns, anything we missed? Um, I did have a question. Let me think. Um, so my question is, uh, that I wanted to ask you if you don't mind real quick, uh, when I'm working, when I was working with the part, I was like really hesitant to ask the part, like, okay. So I, I've had parts that like want to fix other parts. Mm-hmm. So when is the right time to like ask a part, like what it would rather be doing? Like, do you have to make sure that you've heard its whole story before you would ask it that? Cause like, sometimes I like really want to like go in and be like, Oh, pick it up or comfort it or mm -hmm. like give it what it's looking for or whatever. But that, I don't know how to tell when I, that's like me trying to fix it versus mm -hmm. me actually trying to be supportive of it. Okay. That's a really great question. Um, I might have two different answers depending on protectors versus exiles. Okay. Um, okay. For a protector, I feel like it's, you could ask that anytime and that is part of the data. It's not only the data that we need, but it also opens up protectors to seeing that they could hypothetically be using their energy in another way because okay. they're working hard. Uh -huh. um, when I would be a little more reserved with it is with an exile. Um, Yeah. The important thing with exiles, with all parts, but with exiles, they have they felt exiled and they so they're not on the surface and they don't have they don't know when when you're gonna be back, a lot of them. And so it's really important to build the trust through witnessing kind of like you're asking, understand their story. Yeah. So that they trust that you get it, you're connected, you're not going to forget about them. And that if they do make a request, if they do say what they'd rather be doing, that that's going to a safe place, that that's going to be respected. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, I've I've had my own challenges there with, you know, I see an exile and yes, the the, what I'm feeling is rush in, pick it up. Yeah. And make everything okay. And I do think that's a part. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. It feels like, uh, like urgent. 
like a part. Right. Right. And it also is, is kind of missing the curiosity. Or yeah. Even the create or even the creativity. It's kind of like, I know how to do this. I know how to make the kids stop crying, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and maybe they're right. Maybe, maybe they do kind of know, maybe they've worked with that part, maybe whatever. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't give the exile part a chance to feel like it is known and feel like I'm, I'm trusting myself, my story with, with the right person. This is a, this is a safe place for me to invest my vulnerability with. Or to okay. show that too. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll see if I can just summarize again with protectors. I think it's a fine question. Ask them whenever, you know, part let's, let's say I have a firefighter that wants to, that uh, wants to drink. I used to, I used to be a drunk and now I'm not, but I still have a part that tells me I should have a drink occasionally. I might, I might quite immediately say, what, what would you rather be doing? You know, so that's kind of, I can just go there directly with that part. Okay. But with an exile, I'm much more cautious and I'm much more, I want to see the full picture. I want to know the whole story. I want to know why this part's exiled and what I need to do to earn its trust. Mm. And should the like impetus to, you know, dissolve into ether or jump in a river or whatever, like just come from the exile and not at the suggestion? Um, short answer. Short answer, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think when you've done it a handful of times, when you've met other parts, you might have intuition around what to offer or suggest. But generally, parts know what they need, and they can show you in a when much it, more yeah, they can show you in a much more detailed way. Yeah, yeah, and like when they're when they're ready to do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I kind of use that intuition as kind of when I, when the part wants to jump in a river and I'm thinking, okay, that does kind of match my history of meeting parts that like, okay, I, I'm probably getting that message clearly. So that's, that's, I'm having trouble saying this. Um, I'm glad I have my suggestions so that I can compare it to what a part might request that helps that just helps me recognize that pattern and say okay i get that you're glad you have your su- <laughs> yeah okay. um <laughs> i'm, sure if I got I'm just talking about point. i'm talking about you know you have you have your suggestions right and i keep those in my pocket as as a as a reference to compare so when a part does make a request of me, I'm looking, I'm thinking, okay, that is, I see how that fits in with some of my intuition. I don't know. Maybe that's more mm-hmm. useful for a, pra- for a practitioner. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're all kind okay. of practitioners. So we're all doing it mm-hmm. in ourselves. All so. right. Yeah. Anyway, if that didn't make sense, <laughs> I had trouble. I, can... I had trouble making sense of it myself, but no, that's uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, can you hear me now? I, I can. can. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm hoping I can bring some of this dream stuff into reality. Yeah. 
getting a job yeah. and mm. having more Very imagination, more vision over yeah. you know, my next steps in life and all that. Yeah. So I think and giving those was... parts and, and giving those parts what they need in the moment in that process. Cause you know what parts are going to come up when you're working on that project. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So we're, okay. so we're learning about what each of them needs. This, yeah. this sleepy part needs that connection through the breath. Yeah, that airy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it. It feels felt so great. All right. It was Keep like doing the, it. Meta the metaphorical jumping in a river, but like more like, you know, flying in the sky kind of thing. It was very mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, have a wonderful night and weekend. And thanks again. Okay. You too. Okay. Uh, yeah, get you back on the sport. calendar if you'd like. Oh, awesome. Yeah. If, okay. I, I have a part that like thinks I'm the most boring podcast uh, hmm. record recording ever. Um, so, but you know, I, it may, it may be true. My parts are very literal and mm -hmm. like sort of, you know, I have this grown up manager that, um, you know, has helped me make this whole map so that mm -hmm. I could try to be a little less um, agendized, you know, when I mm -hmm. work on stuff. Um, but I have been thrilled to work with you. I, oh. I have always looked forward to working with you. I think we did great work today. Um, it's true that you, you get quiet. And so like in this call, I'm thinking, uh Oh, is she falling asleep? Um, stuff like that. That's, but you're, you're not, and you're clearly doing the work. So that's your okay. way of doing it. Um, I think it's awesome. And, and my primary goal here is not to entertain people. So let them be bored if they're bored. Get back into the, the self that's, um, that's able to, you know, interact with the part I'm on. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, oh, geez, I'm sorry about all that noise. Um, anyhow, uh, I, it's definitely like, um, I hope that, it, you know, do you, do you edit out like some of the silent parts sometimes or, or is that too hard? Oh, <laughs> uh, it's not hard, but I don't edit out silence. Uh, no. Oh, okay. I, I've done a lot of video editing and I always used to look at the sound and chop, chop. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, well, I do appreciate your working with me. I hope it's not too boring. I do feel like... Um, I'm absolutely loving it. I'd love to oh, keep good. working with you. I think Thank you're doing you. great. Thank you. And I really feel and like... I appreciate your contribution also on Discord. I think that's really, that's really great. Cool. I love... I love having this community. It's amazing how small it is, like that I can feel like I can talk really yeah. openly because it's still yeah. pretty small. Um, uh -huh. But I, someday I know this is going to take off like insanity. It's just because these, some of these episodes of the podcast, they're like, they're like blockbuster movies. They're so <laughs> fascinating yeah. and yeah. interesting. And yeah. Like when you follow, well, I'm, I'm still doing zero advertising. I, I mean, other than telling people I meet, I'm, I like it small also. Okay. I think, I think that's a good thing. It's going to be like a long lasting legacy though, for sure. Um, yeah. This stuff is I hope so. so amazing. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, I, I look forward to connecting on discord and at our next appointment. Okay, thank Thanks. you so much. Bye. Good night. Do you want to help bring more self energy to the world? If you'd like to participate in calls or help out with this project in any way, I'd love to hear your ideas. Join the Discord server or contact me at james at liveifs.com. A huge thanks to our audio engineer, Ivan, for your care and diligence in editing the calls to every caller for your courage in sharing some of your parts, and to anyone out there getting to know their internal system, keep going. Who knows, 
that might be the most selfless, helpful thing you can do for others, and you're the only one who can do it. If you'd like to see us reach the largest audience, we must please the almighty suggestion algorithms at iTunes and YouTube. And they don't care about the power of IFS. They're looking for likes and shares and comments, and the sooner the better. Follow the links in the show notes right here in your podcast player to make your wishes known. And now, a minute of meditation. Or if you prefer, pull over. You can do it in 60 seconds. Just click one of those links. They're right there and give us a like or a five-star rating. It would really help. If you think this project is helping people, you're helping people by sharing it. Thank you.